Okay, nobody call the Hoarders Reality TV show on us. Because I do realize that at first glance, it would appear that that's what's happening here. But, of course, all this stuff has value or will be reused um, or can be sold. And um, <laughs> I do realize that's what Hoarders say. This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. It's the all-in-one platform that allows you to build your own beautiful website. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. Yes, we are doing an ad integration. The goal of this channel from the beginning has been to basically build a business that could entertain people with a crazy project and get to work on that crazy project, which we love very much full time and uh, build ourselves a beautiful 60 foot go fast sailboat. And so this is the next logical step for us. And one thing is we will always advertise for companies that we can get behind ourselves. So if, if we know that we could use this product, then we will advertise for them. We strive to be genuine on this channel, be ourselves. And so this is our promise to you is that we will only do stuff that we would use ourselves. We will turn off the mid-roll ads. And so the only ad that you'll see in the middle of the channel is our own. Enjoy the episode. Last week we got into the design of the cockpit and the cockpit combings. I asked for comments from people on their advice, suggestions, ideas. And we got a lot of really, really great comments. And specifically, I will be looking into lowering the benches for to account for cushions. And we're thinking about recessing the winches into the combing. We'll get into that more next week. But thank you again very much for all the comments. I'm sorry I couldn't respond to all of them, but I definitely read through all of them. When we moved the boat into the yard more than a year ago, and I started working on it, the first thing I did was took everything out of the boat. That included plumbing and electrical, all the hardware, all the machinery, and I put it in the garage in a pile. And since then, I have avoided going through all that stuff. Well, we finally found time to tackle the mountain of stuff that is in the back of the garage. My mom and Yanni helped me get everything out of the garage. This was everything that came out of the when we got it. A lot of stuff from both the Mike Plant era and from when John, the previous owner, used the boat. We found a lot of interesting stuff. This was the old uh, water ballast manifold plumbing. These are all electric valves. Hopefully we can find two of these that work for making our own water ballast system. Jerks. Is that a date right there? I think that's, that's a time. So where's the date? Uh, it's probably at the bottom. Oh, date right here. Nine. Four. Four. Lines. Lots and lots of lines. I believe that it is an a antenna tuner for an SSB radio. So. There was a couple of these on board. If anybody is interested, you might try and sell it. I called this the jewelry box. And this was the pulpit that was on the bow. And you can see how it's warped from the collision with the cargo ship in 1994 on the equator. Are you helping? Oh my gosh, David is going to be so excited. <laughs> cool. Whoa. That's cool. Unfortunately, that's not Duracell, but... It's an antenna. Yeah, it's an antenna. Is that reusable? Nope. Those are battens for the mainsail. This stuff is so good because we can reuse the fair leads, the tracks, all still in really good shape. That's awesome. It is. Like, that kind of stuff for a big boat is so expensive. 
There's our also buttons. These were gym tracks, um, rail tracks. Can we use them? Well, how we're gonna have, how we're gonna have the boat set up, we're all probably gonna need a very little track, but we will be able to use a little bit of it. Prop shaft and a nice old max prop. So that was not on Mike Plant's Duracell, that was on John's Duracell. Correct. And that's because the in the Vendee Globe, they were not allowed to have a propeller. Exactly. Yep, and this is a max prop. This is exactly the same prop we had on Louise, same size. Oh. Yep, and, uh, but it's all seized up. It's a feathering, as you can see, it's a feathering prop, but it's not feathering right now. Does that mean if it's seized up, we can't use it? Uh, it could be taken apart and fixed up, I'm sure. I have no idea what it is. Looks like a stretcher. Yeah, it looks, it's pretty small for a bunk and short. Hmm. So. Maybe it's a cat trampoline. Yeah. Cat trampoline. Well, that's mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that, guys? Do you like this? He likes the rat smell. Okay. Gross. <laughs> one of the tracks that the seat was sitting on. So there was the pod, and then there was the chair inside the pod, and that pod or that chair could slide from side to side, I mean, whichever depending on where the bow is healed. And so it's a really nice track. That's the old radar mast. So we have a stack of sales left to go through. I'm really excited to see what we have here. These all came with the boat when we got the boat. What we're hoping is that there will be a sale or two that we might be able to use on the boat in the future. And the rest of them, uh, we'll hope, hope we'll be able to use them for something else. Matt and I are a team and I do a lot of behind the scenes work. One of the projects that I'm working on now is creating a website for the Duracell project. We chose Squarespace to build our website. Buying a domain was super simple on Squarespace. Building our homepage felt really intuitive. Adding content to the template we chose was really easy. Voila, we think our homepage looks pretty slick. We invite you to check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash the Duracell project for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So in order to understand this week's project, you need to know that we are planning to build a serial hybrid electric propulsion system in the boat, which includes a big diesel generator on board. Therefore, we have to be able to store as much diesel fuel as we can and so I'm working on fuel tanks this week. I started by marking up where to cut down the remainder of the ballast tanks and using a laser to mark where the top of the tank will be according to the hole. Then I cut away what was remaining of the ballast tanks. This part will be rebuilt into a stringer, which will be both a structural member and support for the tank. Then I used door skins and old ribbons to make up the bottom and frames for the tank shape. The tank, will, the tank will not sit directly on the hole. There will be supports underneath it to keep it from touching the hole.
Okay, so this is the port side quarter berth. There will be a settee across here, and then underneath this the settee will be a big bed, a double bed for two people. The goal is to fit as much fuel in a tank, an aluminum tank, underneath that bed. And so what I've done is I've mocked up with the door skin and the wood pieces to find the shape of the tank that I, the, the maximum size tank that I can fit underneath the bed. It comes out to about 150 gallons, but we'll take this mock up and to the aluminum tank maker and they will build us an aluminum tank. So a little overview of the layout in here. So this is the quarter berth. There will be a big bed down here for it's big enough for two people. And then a big window in the hole right here. And in this corner will be some cubbies for people to keep their personal items. To get into and out of the bed, there will be a big hole in the bulkhead right here. So the mock-up isn't quite done yet. I have to put a, still put the top on, but there will be about four inches of space above the tank where fuel lines will run, a fuel fill will be connected, a vent, and also to have air ventilation above the tank below the mattress. And then underneath the tank is a lot of, sh there are stringers underneath the tank. And so I can't get rid of the stringers because they're structural members of the boat. In fact, I have to add more supports underneath the tank so that when fuel is moving around in the tank, when the boat's moving around, the tank doesn't blow out. There will be some additions to be made to the, to the hull to, under, uh, to the underside of the tank to make sure that the tank is very well supported. So this is the starboard side quarter berth and the plan in here is to build two sea bunks so small narrow beds that are bunk beds one on top of the other and this is a place where people when we're at sea can come and get in this bed and fit tightly into the bed so that they're not rolling around all over the place if the boat's moving a lot unfortunately that means that i cannot fit a big tank underneath one of these beds so for now all we have planned is to have this big 150 gallons on the port side of the boat. I'm getting ready to pull this mocked up fuel tank out of the quarter berth. The reason that I'm doing this project now is that the fuel tank is bigger than the door that goes into the boat. And so in order for me to get the fuel tank out, I have to take apart the doghouse, take the traveler bulkhead off and move the roof forward. And so I'm trying to get ahead, think ahead, and get things into the boat that are bigger than the door so that I can start to put together, glue together the whole doghouse. Because I'd like to start wrapping things up like that sooner than later. It'd be cool if the, if the roof could be retractable like that all the time. That would be cool. <laughs> Like, convertible. Catalina 25. Would that be totally crazy to do that? Got it out. Uh, I had to do a bunch of cleanup with it and finish it up and then we can take it to the welder later. I'm not in a big rush to get it there, but uh, we'll be taking it probably in the next month or so. So these are the fuel tanks that came out of the boat initially. They were in a place, they, were, they actually replaced part of the ballast tanks. And unfortunately I can't put them back in that place that they were. And so I'm not really sure what to do with them because they're already built to that shape, that place that they were in. And so it's going to be really hard for me to find a place for them. They're really nice tanks. And so if I can find a place, then I'm going to reuse them. Yeah, we'll see, see if I can find a spot for them.
have a few new patrons to thank this week, but first, Matt finished the salon area. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it look beautiful? Just kidding, I made a joke. This is the salon of La Vie and Rose, which is a boat for the Northwest Maritime Center that Matt uh, takes care of. Thank you so much to Emily. Emily lives in Chicago. She is born, raised, and still resides in city limits. And she has sailed since her, she was a teenager. She managed to turn her passion for sailing into work for many years. She taught sailing at an adaptive sailing program. And she also, for four years, ran the youth sailing program for the Chicago Parks District. Pretty cool. Um, she gets out racing a lot and also does some slow cruising. She did the Baja Haha in 2018. And she and her boyfriend have this dog, Mac, who is also a sailor and has really cute ears. And thank you to Tom, who's from here in Port Townsend. He grew up sailing in the San Juans and in New England when his parents, who were teachers, would uh, take their summer vacations out there. He grew up sailing uh, the schooner Defiance in the 60s out in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, and he's also a former Masters uh, national champion rower, so a very, very boaty guy. Uh, we've actually met him here in Port Townsend around town, so uh, thank you very, very much, Tom. And thank you so much to Daniel, who's in Brisbane, Australia. He takes his young family out sailing on this little trailer sailor, and um, he also does a lot of upkeep on it, including recently some more fiberglass work. Here's this picture of his daughter sailing, and we think she looks like she knows what she's doing. Yep. <laughs> and uh, lastly, thank you to Craig. Craig, every once in a while we get, uh, well, you actually got one last week too, we get Patreons who are also taking on these massive projects and they are choosing to support both us and their own project, which um, continues to flabbergast us. But Craig is rebuilding a 1949, 42 foot Heinz Garber old steel boat, steel sailboat from 1949. It's an incredible looking project and another crazy boat guy. So thank you, thank you very much, Craig. Um, good luck with your project. And lastly, thank you to thank Ollie you. and Lucas, yeah. who we haven't heard from. So thank you again very much to everybody. If you are interested in joining the Patreon community, you can find us on the Duracell Project on patreon.com.